Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today we're going to be learning uh, about how to draw an owl. Actually, how to paint an owl. And we're going to be adding some patterning and texture to our owls. And this is a third grade art lesson. Students who are ages seven, eight, this would be great for them. Even a little bit younger could do this. And of course, older. Um, but this really works out beautiful for my first for uh, for my third grade students. The whole class comes out absolutely gorgeous with lots of neat patterning and texture inside uh, this owl, and they are absolutely adorable. Um, here's some examples that the kids have done. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start our own right now. And then I will show you some more of the kids' examples. The first step, and this is uh, this takes about two to three art periods. Our art periods are about 40 minutes long, depending on the day of the week. Sometimes they're 35 minutes. Um, but this is our first step, and we usually get this done in day one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our paper, and we're going to start with this line here, this number one in the in the middle of our page as far as side to side and we're going to go to the top center and drop down now look we're going to drop down three fingers from the top center now if you want to go four and have a little bit more negative space at the top here you can go down four depending on your paper this paper um, that I did with my kids is an eight by eight inch square piece of paper and uh, it's fairly small. Normally I don't work this small, uh, but for this lesson we were sending it to a Square One Art to have it reproduced on products, so it's a very small paper. So it's up to you how many fingers down, but at least three fingers down so you have room for your ears. So we take our hand, we place it at the very top middle and we drop down three and we take our brush and we go ahead and put a dot there for measurement. Now when I do this lesson, I always I always like to paint, just go freehand paint, straight in with the paint. And uh, and then if I make a mistake, I can just paint over it. Uh, with the pencil, sometimes it leaves eraser marks or it leaves gouges. Uh, so I don't I don't really care when I do my paintings to pencil mark it first. And especially with the kids, it takes too long. So we go ahead and we go straight to paint and we hold our brush just like a pencil and we draw a number one. Now the number one is going to be, measure with your finger, it's going to be at least a knuckle down, which is about an inch. Now from there, what we're going to do is we're going to make two large circles. Now you want those large circles to be at least three fingers wide. So I'm going to measure over three fingers, measure over three fingers. Now notice when I measure, I don't measure here. My fingers are touching the line. And so I'm just putting a dot on that side. Now what I'm gonna do is turn this into two giant circular shapes. Now they're not exactly perfect circles, they're just circular. And let me show you on this one, see here? If you turn it this way, it makes the number eight. How cool is that? So you can turn your paper however you want. Curve. Let the hand, your hair drag behind. Go slow and careful. Usually the art making process is a slow, it's a careful, deliberate process. You don't want to be sloppy and messy and just slap down that circle. Visualize it in your mind first. Let the hairs drag behind. And notice I start one area and then I bring it into the other. Bring it into the other. That way they meet together. If it's a little lopsided, you can just kind of make it a little bit thicker as you go along. Right in here and they blend together. So I'm going to come up as I'm forming my circle. Come on up on this side a little bit. Curve it down. Slowly curve it down until they meet. Now I keep on dipping in and I want to keep my brush pointed. I want to keep a small amount of paint, look, barely touch in on my brush. You know, if I have thick globby puddles, my lines are going to be thick and globby. That means lots of paint and a big mess. Let me show you the, show you the difference over here. 
I can paint a thick, globby, messy line like this. Okay, or I can even do it messier like that. That is globby and messy. You want your lines to be smooth, careful, and deliberate. When the hairs drag behind, you get a beautiful, smooth line. That's a big difference. And it's a big difference in the quality of your artwork in the end, the craftsmanship. Okay, next step, we're gonna go to the edge and we're gonna paint a number one, just a small one. Look, it's not even as wide as my finger, a number one. And then I'm gonna give the guideline. Now look, here's the top of the page here. I don't want to put my owl so close to the top, I have nothing there. I want to jump down at least of one finger or more. Put a little guideline, and now I'm just going to go over horizontal and gently curve down. Now notice I'm drawing with the brush. Go over horizontal, drop down. To draw with the brush, it's best to keep it straight up like a soldier as you draw. You're using just the points. Rest your wrist or your arm on the table. And you get a nice, even line. Now, some owls have this little feathers coming up off the side here, and little bumps for ears. So you can touch the edge, press down with your brush, and kind of curve it and flick up. This gives a little feather texture. Press, curve, flick. Press, curve, flick. Do two or three flicks and it gives a little ear for ear feathers. Now I'm going to trace the edges again. I want to make concentric circles. Let me show you on this student's artwork here. Age seven, concentric circles. So we've just drawn the outside circle. Now we want to put another circle on the inside for the eyes. Let's see on this one here, you see? Another circle on the inside and we want to leave some white. Rest your wrist, hold up straight, and we're going to do, you can put guidelines in if you want, a curve and a curve, down here and down here, and basically just connect the dots. If you're not good at making circles, that's a way of doing it. A dot, a dot, measuring equal distance, equal distance, measuring equal distance around the edge, see where my dots are? Then I just simply connect the dots with curves. That's a simple way to draw a circle with your brush. There we go. Okay, using just the tip. Now I'm going to create the belly of the owl. I want to come up from the bottom of my page, two fingers, put a little line. See, I want to use that whole page up. And now I'm coming over to the edge of my circles, not quite up here, but where the round part of it starts curving up. Put a little guideline, put a little guideline on this side. Now we're going to form the belly of our owl. Now you can see on this owl, this is more pointed, this belly. And here we have an owl from this student that's a little bit more rounded. It's basically a giant letter U that you're going to make. So come on down slowly on both sides. And then you're going to come up to meet. Let the hairs drag behind. Let's see if you can see that as I paint. I'll tip my brush. And then you get a nice skinny thin line. This is just the outline of the owl. Now what I do for the feet, I just, I do one basic color for the whole body with brush. That helps break unity. One color united to the whole page. It helps with unity. Now for the feet, I continue in the same color. And I, I'm holding my brush now horizontal and parallel to my page. So what I've done is I've loaded up with the paint. And now I'm bringing my brush flat which is parallel to the page. And I'm just gonna simply press and print the hairs of my brush. And I'm gonna do that one, two, and they're touching. I'm gonna have to load up again, three. And that's gonna give little, I'll redo that one. That's gonna give three little claws close together for the feet. Doesn't even have to touch this. And I'm gonna tip it on this side, one, two, three. And that'll give the claws. And then one more thing before we switch color. 
we're going to be doing the wings. There's little flappy wings coming out of our owl here. On this example, you can see how they come out. They're V-shaped right off the edge, and they come right underneath these eyes on the body of the owl. You don't want to have them coming off of the head. You see how they come, and they're almost like long, skinny Vs. So we're going to come on the body. Actually, it's, it's if you start off right before this starts curving, if you start here, go down and very skinny up, and then connect it to the right underneath the head with a straight line. So I come off of the body straight. That's kind of fat. You want them to point because they're the wings, and then bring it back up to meet the body. Now, if you look at mine, mine are not the same size. You can adjust them with paint. That's the beauty of paint. Look how easy that is to fix. That's why I really love paint. If that was drawn with a pencil, we'd have to get out the eraser, erase it. It might leave gouges from the pencil line. Now we're going to fill in the, the just with a stroke, light strokes. And I t say to the kids, it's like petting a, an animal. You do it in one direction, so you get nice, smooth paint. A nice smooth surface. You don't want any puddles. There. Nice and smooth. Okay, then the next step is we're going to wash our brush and we're going to do a little V shape beak. And you can choose any value. If you'd like a dark brown beak, um, if you want a bright beak, an orange beak, I'm going to stick in. A little bit of red orange so what I'm gonna do and in my classroom if the paints are at the same tray then you may double dip and double dip means you can go into one color and go into the other color and because orange is made from red red and yellow make orange this is not gonna hurt each other if we double dip back and forth it's not gonna mess up my paint so I let the kids double dip if they're on the same tray or at the same table. So I'm going to load up with some of this red and orange because red plus orange will make a red orange beak. And I'm going to hold my brush straight up like a soldier. Again, my fingers are near the metal. If you're here, you don't have control. Okay? Fingers near the metal. And I'm going to start a number one down the middle. And I'm going to draw it very skinny. And I'm going to stop where I want my beak to end. Then I'm going to slowly make it thicker where it meets the eyes. Now, if I want a little bit more orange on this side, I'm going to put a little bit more orange. And you want to keep the, vo the beak very, very pointy. Owls are carnivorous. They eat meat. They're meat eaters. And they like little rodents and little, oh, I messed up. They like little rodents and little animals, so they have a very sharp, pointy beak. So you want it to be pointy. If you messed up, just like me, just make it a little bit bigger by fixing those lines a tad bigger. I'm going to add some of this thicker orange paint. I want it to be a little bit more orange. But you can play with the color. depends on your color. I want it to be a little bit red orange. I want it to show up nicely. Okay, so once you get that, then what we're going to do is we're going to start in with some... Uh, I'm going to let the eyeballs dry. And like I said, this is pretty much basically what we do in one day. Although I do want you to paint in first. Uh, and I'm going to just lightly sketch it with the brush here where I'm showing you. I'll do it with the light orange until I get the brown. We're going to connect with our tips. Connect, connect. And we're just going to go behind the owl for a branch. And we're going to do a nice, thick branch. We're going to get this brown. So we're doing a nice, thick branch, and it goes behind the owl. Because the owl's sitting on top of that branch. Let's see an example I haven't showed you yet here. I don't know if I showed you this or not. See how my little owl is sitting 
behind. And that's about what we get done in day one um, with, with the kids in the classroom. So we get our owl sketched out and then we get our branch painted. I'm just gonna continue the lesson though. So we go ahead carefully. Now when you come to the owl, just be really careful as you're painting and then pull the paint away from the owl. Whoops. And at this time, you can even add some shadow underneath if you have time. Shadow underneath the owl. Let me get all this painted first. I'll try and do it fast. I'm not gonna paint in between the toes just to save time. But if you have time, go ahead, you get, you get these spaces here. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to add a branch right up in here. And I'm gonna stick a branch in. And then of course you can make some more branches over in here too if you have time. This is negative space around, oopsie. This is negative space around my paper. So we can add, if we have some time, some other branches here. Cause I want that owl to be sitting up in that tree. He's sitting up in that tree and he's looking and he's looking and looking for little creatures that are moving so he can swoop down or he might be sitting up in that tree with his nest. So add some fun branches back in here too. If you have time, you can have them coming down, shapes of V's. Now when I do the branches, you can press your brush, go to the edge of your page, and you want one part of the branch to be thicker, and then at the end, the tips of the branch, you want to taper it so it's very, very skinny. So I go thin to thick, thin to thick. That's how I do my branches. And you can add, of course, as many branches as you want. Then I'm going to start in, now this is pretty much day one. And that's great because then everything's gonna be drying and then we're able to rest our hand on our papers to get detail. Now the next day we come back in. So if you wanna let this dry and then continue um, or just be real careful as you're painting. But the next day when we come back in, what I like to do is I like to give a little bit of bright color inside the eye. So you can see how this student put some bright yellow in that eyeball. And this student chose to do some bright blue eyes. So you choose your eyes. Here's red eyes. I prefer it to be another color than red, but that's up to you what you want. Um, so you choose a bright color for your eyes. And actually, I kind of want some green eyes on my owl. So on the inside here now, I'm going to go ahead and paint in uh, a, just a little ring of green. And actually, I want that to be a little bit thicker color, so I'm mixing. This is tempera paint that I'm using, and some of the tempera paint I'm using is student grade tempera, and others are premium tempera. I'm starting to switch out all my classes because I've noticed that that student, I mean, I'm starting to switch out all my paint because I noticed that that student grade tempera is very thin, and I don't really care for this thin tempera. You can see the difference between the blue and this green. So uh, I would prefer the premium tempers, and that's what I'm trying to switch out right now, use up all the other stuff that I have and switch to that premium. Uh, but there's that green. Yeah, I, I don't care for that thin. It shows the brush strokes. It's harder for the kids to use. I prefer things that make their paintings much better. So there's that green there. Now, the next part is the, is the texturing. So this day two, we add the eye color. Let that dry. You can even make that a little bit thicker too because I don't want the blacks to be that big. I'm going to make this space a little bit bigger actually because I'm going to end up putting a black circle in the middle of those eyeballs. So you can actually come back in. And look, I'm giving it this lighter green color in the center just to give some two-tone in the eyeballs. Then the next step is to go ahead and decide what color do I want my owl to be. Here's some examples here. And you want to pick at least two values. Now, it can be similar values. It could be the same family or different color families. This was a brown with some purple. Um, here, at least two, like I said. Here, there's a combination of a lot of them. This student did rainbow. 
So you're going to decide and plan how you want to make some kind of a pattern for your fur texture. I mean your feather textures. Here's some with even dots with patterns here. But the thing that you want to remember is, is what you do here, you should have the same patterning up at the top of the head. That brings unity to our picture. So it all matches, all body parts would match. That really helps with that word unity. You can see how this is together with the same pattern. So as you're working up your patterning, and actually I'm going to do, I'll just do a brown pattern. So I'm gonna work it up and now when I do the feathers here for texture, I'm actually just gonna print my texture. Again, just like we did down here, hold the brush parallel to the paper and just press, 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 and you get tiny little feathers. And actually, this brush was kind of a dirty brush. I didn't wash it, so I have those two-tone, which really make it neat. So if you double dip, remember I said you could double dip? If the paint is at the same table, you may double dip if they're in the same tray for actually my classroom. Your teacher might have different rules. And don't forget, like I said, continue the pattern at the top. Let me get rid of some of this. I want some thick, thin. And I'm just neatly pressing right across. And I'm gonna do this really fast. I'm gonna put a second row in and then down here. And you continue your pattern. Now, once you're done the whole thing, let me just do this crazy fast. Mine's not gonna be very neat, but look, I want you to take your time and make it neat. By taking your time, you get neat results. If you hurry crazy like me, you might get you might get it too messy. Now what you do is you take another, you can let this dry a minute and work up here. The, the wings are long skinny lines and these, if we look at the bottom of our page, the wings come up. I'm going to actually put a little bit of red brown, put, mix a little bit of round bread together and make this a darker brown. So the wings come, are long wing feathers for flight. So I do long lines coming up. And this is almost, I'm almost making a vertical line with a slight curve, okay? And they're long and thin, right in there. And then of course, where it reaches the top shoulders, these are smaller, but I'm not gonna put any feathers up there. So that's done with my color one for the body. Now I'm going to choose the second color and I'm going to print in between here and that will give this look, this feathery look. And again, keep your top and bottom same patterning colors to bring unity to the whole bird so that you don't have one body part one color, one body part another color. So I'm going to choose another value. Now I'm going to stay away from greens because I know I want this to be green in my planning. I'm going to do kind of a red-orange color. I think, I'll, no, yeah, I'll stick with red-orange. And in between now, I'm just going to print red-orange. And I'm just pressing. And this will give some texture. Now you could hand paint the wings the, the feathers on, but this is just a fast, easy. Remember I said this is for grade, third grade. So this is an easy way to make a great looking textured owl. And it gives the feeling of feathers, the feeling that it's soft and fluffy. So at we, I'm using this red orange color. Red plus orange is red orange. So there I have my little owl. And I like the way when it's the brown is still wet, it's blending together. Now I am not doing this. I'm not taking my brown and I'm not taking my red orange and stirring. This is like stirring chocolate milk or mopping a floor. I am not doing that. I am printing neatly and carefully and I'm going back and printing, whoops, printing neat and carefully in between with a different color. It's forming a brown, red, brown, red pattern. It's not as noticeable because I'm doing it on top of it, but then it fills in. Now I assess and I say, does this look good? Do I have enough of this color in my body here? Maybe I can put a few little dots near the edges here. Maybe I wanna go on top of some of this blue outline. Say I have a really thick outline I wanna get rid of a little bit. Come on top with some of that color pattern. I wanna make sure my 
beak shows nicely. If my beak doesn't show nicely, maybe it's blended in too much. Maybe I want to take a little darker value and outline it or just outline one line, one side to show this is some shadow. Now with the black, very carefully, I'm going to do my circles in the center for the pupil of the eye. Start off with a little dot and then carefully work the tip of the brush to form your rounded pupils. Now you don't want your pupils to be a teeny weeny dot. You want them to be of a, a, a good size. Slowly get bigger and slowly get bigger. You increase slowly in case you make a mistake. Now, looking at this, I can see they're not the same size. So look what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. And then just slowly increase it. Start small, work your way big. And that ended up being cute. Now you can give some texture in this the branches now. I can do a shadow on the bottom. Look at this, look how gorgeous, just by doing a little line, using just the tip of my brush with that black. Give a little shadow here on the bottoms of the branches. Bottoms of the branches, bottom edges of the branches. The inner bottom, oops, that's a little fat. I can barely touch the brown. I have a little bit of brown and black on my brush. And I can give some texture in here. Little short choppy lines. Barely touching. That way I have mostly brown. And I come on up, give a little texture. And that's how you can give some texture to your branches. Next I'm going to show you how to print easy way of doing leaves. You want to group the leaves. I'm going to go into some green and I double dip dark green, light green. Look, I can do groupings just by pressing. Pressing the brushes. Now, I don't want to, again, paint big blobs like this. You can see how my brush was still dirty. Of green. What I want to do is just simply pr press the brush. I'm holding it parallel. And I'm just pressing some of these leaf shapes. I don't want to do leaf, 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 leaf in a pretty row. I want them to be excuse me, grouped. Okay, so I want to fix this because I don't want it to be a, just randomly placed. Maybe I'll put a group here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then odd groups seem to work better. And you know, I can do with some leaves here. Press, press. They don't even have to touch the branch because the tiny little stems of the leaves are so small, you don't even see them. Changing your values. You wanna have dark values and light values. Put an overlap too. You can have them overlap the trees. And just a few of them here, there. There, press, press, press. And this side could use some more. You assess your picture and say, where, where does it need more? Where does it look like uh, it doesn't look realistic? Well, here's just two little lonely ones. So fill it in, put some more. And I'm gonna put some more back here on the edges because we don't see the branches here, but we we know that there's leaves there. And maybe uh, I wanna save some room here for signing. Maybe some a grouping down at the bottom. There. And there you have your really cute owl with some texture, some patterning in the fur and texture. Our patterning kind of forms our texture. Um, and then if you wanna add anything else, some kids, if they had, what they did was they put a little baby owl in a nest. If they had a lot of room here, they put a little nest or they just put a little friend. So that's up to you, it depends on how much room you have. Here is my little friend right here on a branch in the distance. Their friend owl is sitting in the distance. So I hope you had fun making your textured owl.